Welcome to another special Highlights episode of MediaSpace Members Daily. MediaSpace Beta launched on 12th of May this year, in historic times when the COVID crisis was around its peak. The economy and the media industry were strongly hit. Social distancing was the new norm, and our daily Zoom interviews represent these very difficult months till the end of July. More and more members are joining MediaSpace from all around the world, and we do interview quite a few of them. We've had the pleasure of having some of the most experienced and influential interviewees within the media, marketing, gov, tech industries globally. Today, we'll be looking back at their key messages regarding the opportunities that have risen as a result of COVID-19. There is an opportunity to kind of press a reset button and almost restart and rethink what it is that you're about and what your key priorities should be and, and how you can serve your clients better in the future. So yeah, I think there is an opportunity. It is interesting to spend during times like this, much more time supporting people emotionally, helping them think through how they balance professional and personal lives. Uh, and so I think that while I wouldn't ask for this opportunity, it's only good to build that muscle and make sure that you're thinking about your employees as full people and not just what they bring at work. The large digital giants will still be there, but Investors can make more money by investing in innovative companies that have now a growth potential of 10x or more. Markets and investors are taking rational views based on available information. That's why relevant information is vital to make decisions and to prepare for growth. So the main point that media companies are seeing is is around subscriptions and reader revenue and membership and that has been a bright spot but with most things it like the coronavirus has shown it's sort of incongruous so there's been publishers have had huge traffic but they've not really been able to monetize that traffic either because it's been blocked by um coronavirus keywords from advertisers blocking their ads or it's been because um because you know, the programmatic revenues are so low that it's hard to maintain any kind of meaningful revenue from them. So whilst there's been publishers that have been recording high uh, subscription numbers, they haven't necessarily been able to follow that up with revenue. We've seen a good pick up across all of these leading markets, particularly in the technology sector. So I think as a lot of people um, are working remotely, working from home, um, we've seen that whole te tech sector put on between 15 and 20 percent increase in the time being expenditure um, over this COVID uh, period. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry has been up um, between three and five percent across those leading markets. Um, they're obviously um, a category that does uh, focus, as does CPG, on being able to buy cheaper priced inventory and PG has also been uh, up slightly, um, and obviously that is because a lot more people are, you know, eating from home. Um, ad prices we have seen be pretty depressed, uh, although all numbers have been up. We are realizing that uh, Internet of Things is here to stay. Uh, more and more devices are being connected. Uh, people are getting more and more uh, being out there and, and sharing the content. So we nowadays create our own content. So it's very important to realize that it's not just a media outlet who has been creating the content and pushing to us. We have announced a $800 million commitment to support small and medium-sized businesses and also governments, health organizations and workers on the front line of this uh, global pandemic. But also very importantly, we have been uh, partnering up with Apple to, to work on the COVID-19 tracking app API, which I think uh, was a very big deal. But also we shouldn't forget about uh, some of the other products we have redesigned to meet the, the criteria of the new bird that has evolved uh, around us. So for example, Google Meet. For me, incredible to see how the media sector stepped up at the time uh, when the need for trustworthy information has never been greater and uh, never been urgent. Uh, access uh, to uh, quality information, uh, timely information is really imperative during a global health crisis. And this is also, I think, one of the key pillars uh, that is uh, required uh, in, a, uh, in such a trying time uh, during uh, this health emergency. This is also an information we need to slow the spread of the virus, mitigate the impacts, and underpin collective societal responses. There's been a number, number of opportunities, specifically um, around the sectors that are growing. 
So um, looking at uh, the future of work, B2B enterprise, there's a lot of fast growing companies there. Obviously we're doing this over Zoom. So Zoom and its competitors are growing very well. There's been a number of recent investments um, into conference type um, organizations. So looking at taking conferences, which are traditionally physical and person to person and putting that experience online. Uh, we um, who are working at universities in, in academia, uh, in higher education, or I think also just uh, teachers working in any um, um, educational institution had to explore the true capacities of digital technologies and digital teaching methods and skills and tools. Well, I think a lot of people in Europe are enjoying, I hope, uh, zero commute. So that's one benefit. Uh, we're working from home if we can. Um, it's not pleasant necessarily, but there are a lot of, lot of other opportunities in terms of becoming more efficient with respect to the way that we do our work. So for example, we're able to focus more on the substance of our work, uh, get to the point more quickly, um, ideally face uh, new opportunities through social media or other means to communicate uh, when we can't be face to face with people. And so that means that our reliance on e-commerce and online platforms is ever greater. And I'm an optimist, so I hope that this has created more benefits. I think there's a gap for, for smart companies to help us, you know, to build communities of trust and of mutual support. I think we're going to need and, and want more of that. Um, and, you know, these, this technology can really open our horizons up to so many other possibilities. And particularly, I think they can help the third sector you know, the charities and NGOs in, in connecting and helping people. So really showed us that we can use this time to be innovative. And nonetheless, we also, we also see, uh, saw how good home office is working. So I think that's definitely something that uh, 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 a lot of, uh, um, yes, makes people happy. And uh, just stuff like that, where you rethink your whole business strategy and, and how you deal, um, deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. Media pricing is going to become a generic hygiene. Media traders who not so long ago ruled the roost are going to become extinct. They're already extinguishing. Therefore, my point about differentiation through creativity, data, analytics, and relevance will prevail in media too. You can be creative and you can be differentiated in media. And of course, if you focus on results and effectiveness, you can tie that and you can say to your clients, um, listen, if we do that, we're anticipating that much upturn. So you spend 5 million and you get 55 million return. That's a good ROI in it. And as we've moved all, as we've moved through the kind of three, four months of, of lockdown and come out the other end, I think the opportunities now are different to what they were at the beginning um, of the lockdown. The opportunities now are the fact that the world has changed. It, for pretty much every sector, the world has changed. And we need to find out, and, and companies need to find out how it's changed and how it's impacting their clients, their customers. And that's tough because we've built a knowledge over decades of how customers and clients and consumers behave. So we kind of know how people behave in a, in a supermarket. You can base some assumptions around that and you can base decisions on those assumptions that's changed people do not behave the same in supermarkets anymore i think for us as an organization it's allowed us to really look at how we operate how we're structured how we're planning and also something that's also very important to us is what's our purpose what's our personal purpose and what is our organizational purpose because i think that's going to be extremely important for how we all find our motivation to move through this time of uncertainty and we take advantage, I hope, of many opportunities that may flow post-COVID. Thank you for joining us as we reflect back on our highlights. Stay tuned for the next special episode coming soon. In the meantime, connect with us at mediaspace.global.